Now we'll have a brief orientation on using Sakai for this course. First, you'll go to durhamtech.edu, go over to Students, scroll down, and click on the Sakai link. Alternatively, you can also go straight to sakai.durhamtech.edu. Now before we get started, I want to point out here, Help for Students. This is a great resource for you that gives you information on how to post in a forum, how to take a test a quiz, submit papers, stories, or other assignments, and information on uploading photos, resetting your password, finding your courses, etc. So the Sakai Help for Students can answer a lot of the questions you might have about Sakai. So you'll log in using your Durham Tech username and password. Here you will have your course schedule for all of your courses, as well as your announcements for all of your courses for the past 10 days. Up here, you'll see your classes. Now, if you don't see this class, what you'll need to do is click over here to view all sites. Make sure that the course that you want is starred and the other ones aren't if you don't need them. Then reload and your course is now visible. Once it is, click on it and you'll have all the information that you need. It has a nice cute little graphic the name of the class, as well as the instructor name and email. All the announcements for the last 10 days will be posted here. And again, your calendar is repeated. So once due dates are added, you'll see them here on the calendar. Now, please note that for forums, there is not a due date associated with it in the calendar, even though there is in the course. You can click here on the announcements tab in order to see all the announcements for the course. So everything for the past year will be posted, while on the first page, it'll only be posted for the last 10 days. Your course syllabus is here. You'll just click here, click on it, and it'll give you all the information that you need, giving you my information, the course description, etc. Some things that you'll wanna make sure you look at in your specific syllabus, the grading policy, of course, that we went over. You will want to know um, also, here's the course schedule on one page for easy printing. The information that you will need to know that is specific to each course and each syllabus is the census date for entering the course. You do have to submit some activity in Sakai in order for it to count. Um, be sure to check with your specific course as it might not be this one. You will also scroll down to the drop period. It lists the final drop date for the course as well as the final withdrawal date for the course. Again, check with your specific syllabus to make sure that you know when these dates are in case you find yourself needing to drop or withdraw from the class. Next, you'll have lessons where we will spend the bulk of the information. Look at gradebook. Everything that is listed will eventually be listed here with um, the due date as well as the number of points. It'll be grouped by Sakai homework, weekly participation, as well as writing assignments. All the assignments will be listed here once they open. Each assignment will open two weeks prior to the due date, your writing assignment, so you'll have plenty of time to do them. Here we have the course discussions, um, the forum. Here's some ground rules. Um, make sure you don't yell use proper style, report any glitches, etc. Feel free to read this so that you understand it. I'll also show you the forum that we have for our first week's assignment. You can find tests and quizzes here once they are available. If you want to email me, feel free to use it from Sakai or you can perhaps email the other students in the course. All the emails that I send from Sakai will be here in the email archive. Again, you can see your calendar, the roster, as well as resources. We'll take a look at resources now. Here is the number one resource, if you will. It is a copy of the 2006 AP Style book that I was able to find online. Now, it's not 2006, it's nowhere close to 2006, 
but this is a free PDF that I found. So if you aren't able to afford a new AP style book or think you might not pursue journalism past this initial course, you can use this for your AP style quizzes as well as helping you with your stories. Again, it is not ideal, but it is available to you. You can also find various handouts that will be also shared with you throughout the course of the semester, such as, for instance, AP Style Basics, giving you information about the Associated Press, how to spell out numbers, numerals, etc. There's also information on grammar, punctuation, and editing marks. And these are what you will find in your paper to indicate what needs to be changed. So now, now let's scroll over here to the lesson tab. This is where we're going to be spending the bulk of our time in class. Everything is accessible from the lessons tab. So we'll click here for lessons and you'll see that not all of them are released. Only classes will be released one week at a time. So here in each week's lesson, there will be the title, for instance, this is Class Orientation and Journalism 101, as well as the due date for this particular assignment. Here's a handy weekly checklist to make sure that you have all the tasks completed for a week. For instance, in this week, you will read Chapter 1 from the Harrower textbook. All of your readings will be listed here, and then the actions you need to complete. You'll need to sign up for Edpuzzle, you'll need to watch the Edpuzzle videos, as well as complete the introduction forum. Then you'll scroll down to get a little bit of information about the lecture videos, your code to enter the class, that's very important, we'll get up to that later, and then links to these videos, the class orientation, as well as the Sakai and Edpuzzle tutorials. Next, you will have your lecture videos for the week. Now, if this were an in-person class, we very well might have an hour's worth of lecture any given week. So I want you to start with the assumption that you will have an hour's worth of lecture for any given week and be pleasantly surprised if you don't. For this particular week, we have six videos, the orientation and Sakai and Ed puzzle tutorial, as well as one lecture about the story of journalism and some supplemental videos talking about the black press, Nellie Bly, a famous woman in journalism, and a little bit about modern journalism and what's going on today. Next, you'll see the assignments. Now, in future weeks, when a story is coming up, you'll see next week's assignment. So you'll have your assignment for that week, as well as giving you information about the story that's coming up. So it'll give you a full two weeks to work on it. You don't have to start working on it seven days beforehand. You can start working on it 14 days beforehand. So here is your assignment for the first week. It is a introduction forum. It gives you the information that you need as well as the link to it. So what we'll do is we'll exit our view, go back here, and I'll show you a little bit more about the forum. You'll click here. Again, it says not published yet because the class hasn't started yet. So you'll click here and you'll be able to see the introduction forum because it linked right to it. Again, it gives you the full description here. Oop. All the information that you need, as well as if you click here, you can see what has already been posted. So far, just me, meet Ms. Gilbert. It gives you the information that you can read as well as what my Myers-Briggs personality type is. I'm an ISTJ and that is 100% accurate. To reply, you just hit reply and you can say hey to me as well, replying to the initial message. You can also go back and start a new conversation where you can say, meet yourself and then post it. You might not be able to edit it once it's posted, so feel free to go back over it to make sure that you do everything correctly, or if you end up missing something, just reply to that post. So that is information on how to use Sakai here in this course. 
Now we'll learn how to use Sakai, a special third-party software specifically selected by your instructor to allow for much more interactive elements than a basic video. You can go to edpuzzle.com, but the easiest way is to go straight to your lesson page and click here. This gets you right into the course rather than having to log in with the ID, which is right there. So this takes you right to the course, course and you hit join class. Now you'll be able to see the class right here with its name. Now it has all of the information listed here as well as all of the lectures that are available. What we're going to take a look at is the sample Edpuzzle video. We'll click here and it'll say when the due date is and you can look over here and see that there are some multiple choice questions. So you'll click play. Now in many lawn lecture videos, they will have a written note to begin the video, explaining how it connects to that week's readings or assignments. You must click continue over here to advance the video. If you ever find yourself stuck at the beginning of the video, there's probably a note that you need to read and acknowledge. So you'll click continue. Then you'll see some questions inserted, such as what color are Ms. Gilbert's cats? This is a multiple choice question. So think back to the orientation video and think about what color my cats are. Uh, that looks good. Um, and then we'll go to the next one, which is an open-ended question, which is another type that you might encounter. How many major writing assignments are there in the course? There are four. So then we'll hit submit. And it'll tell you the grade. Yeah, Eleanor and Michelle are a tuxedo, so black and white, and uh, kind of Siamese looking. So regardless of what answer you select, it'll let you know. Now, it's not imperative that you get the questions right. They're just meant to reinforce key concepts. But please try to get the questions right. I'll know if you're not. Then you'll go to the next question. How many major writing assignments? Four. This class has four major writing assignments. Now you'll notice that this is to be graded. Usually I grade about once a week. So it might take a week for you to get the score back, but you'll also be able to see down here, the feedback, this class has four major writing assignments, so you'll know if you're correct. So this is a sample Edpuzzle video. You can also turn on closed captions in any video where they are available by clicking on the CC button at the bottom of the screen. This allows you to read the words as they're being spoken, which can aid in your understanding of the material. And that's how to turn on closed captions. Then you're done and it'll show your results. You've had 100% of the video completed and you have one out of two correct responses. I'll also take you here to completed. So it'll show you what is completed. See the number of assignments still to be graded. And that is what I can, what you'll be able to see. Now each of these has a start date and a due date. And you'll notice that they have the upcoming assignments. That's where you'll see what's coming up next, where it'll list the start date as well as the due date. Here, for example, 1.1, that's a lecture. Now, they're not always in order. Uh, 1.2 would be next, your video on the Black Press. 1.3, Women's History Minute, Nellie Bly. It's exactly a minute, that's nice as well as another 1.4 video, Journalism, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. Now, if you're ever missing any videos, they will show up here. For example, these are all older videos that I haven't reassigned yet. So you'll be able to see the lecture on how newsrooms work, what is news, etc. So you'll easily be able to see what you're missing. Now, hold on for a second, and I'll log out and show you what I can see as your instructor. I'm a teacher ready for class. So I can go over here to the class and it'll show that there's one new answer for the assignment. 
one answer to grade, that's me. I have watched it 100% and I've done it on time. I'll click answer to grade, four, awesome. Now sometimes I'll leave comments, you are correct. Or I'll just give you zero points or 100 points. I can also show you the class members. So far, it's just me, as well as the grade book. So this is what I'm able to see. And it tells me how much time you have spent, as well as your score. So I take all of the videos, say there's 10 videos in a given week, and you get 10 points. If you watch all 10 videos, you get 10 points. If you watch eight out of 10 videos, you'll get eight points. If there's five videos and you watch four videos, you'll get eight points. That's how I divide it. So this is what I'll see so I know how much time you spent. And again, it doesn't matter if you get all the questions right or not. It's just meant to reinforce concepts. So that is a quick tutorial on how to use Edpuzzle. Hopefully you'll enjoy it.